We are so almost done. It's lesson 33. The end is in sight, uh, not just of Taylor series, but of the course. So on today's show, we put a whole lot of pieces together in ways that are bound to make somebody uncomfortable. All right. All right. So here we go. There are some series that I'm going to call the must-knows. And by must-knows, I mean that they have to be on an index card somewhere and you have to know them. Uh, you have to know 1 over 1 minus x. You have to know that that is a geometric series. First term is 1, common ratio is x. The general term is x to the n. And you have to know that this thing holds for absolute value of x less than 1. You have to know that. Now, the reason why you have to know that is for what popped up three lessons ago, where we asked you to take this series and play with it. Because if you know this, you know 1 over 1 plus x. You know 1 over 1 plus x squared. Um, if you know 1 over 1 plus x, you know the natural log of 1 plus x. If you know 1 over 1 plus x squared, you know the inverse tangent of x. So knowing this series gets you a whole bunch of others. You have to know that e to the x is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus and so on, so that the nth term is x to the n over n factorial and so on, and that holds true for all x. You have to know that. You have to know that sine x is x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 5th over 5 factorial minus x to the 7th over 7 factorial and so on so that you get negative 1 to the n plus 1 x to the 2n minus 1 over 2n minus 1 factorial for all x. Yeah, that works. And then you don't really need to memorize cosine x, but lots of people do. You could just take the derivative of this series term by term, and that would do it. Uh, or you could memorize 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial minus x to the 6th over 6 factorial plus and so on, so that the nth term is negative 1 to the n plus 1 x to the 2n over 2n factorial and so on for all x. Those are the must-knows, and we can break down where they come from, but really, you can break down where they come from. You can form a Taylor series, and it's not hard to see the patterns from there. Now, truth be told, no exam question ever is going to ask you for this or this or this. I'm not going to ask you for e to the x. I'm not going to ask you for sine x. I'm not going to ask you for cosine x. I am going to ask you to generate a power series representation for things like x times cosine x or sine squared of x or e to the 3x. Those are things that I have no problem asking you to do. None. Okay? Okay. So, what's this? This at the top. This is x times cosine x. And so really, literally, that's what you do.
That is literally exactly what you do. And then you can find a general term for that, I hope. I hope. Um, we'll stall for time on this one. This guy. Uh, we know that e to the x is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial and so on. So e to the 3x is 1 plus 3x plus 3x squared over 2 factorial plus 3x cubed over 3 factorial. This is something I can expect you to do. And you could generate the nth term if you wanted to. Right? So this thing. Uh, I learned way back in chapter 8 that sine squared x is 1 minus cosine of 2x over 2. And that is very helpful because that's 1 half minus 1 half times the cosine of 2x. So that's 1 half minus, and then you open up parentheses, right? You've got 1 half times, open up parentheses, cosine of 2x. And cosine of 2x is what I'm going to get when I stick a 2x here, here a 2x, there a 2x, everywhere a 2x, 2x. And that turns into, oh, you'll love this, uh, the 1 half and the negative 1 half go away. Minus minus is a plus. You get 2x squared over 2 times 2 factorial minus 2x to the 4th over 2 times 4 factorial plus 2x to the 6th over 2 times 6 factorial minus and so on. And you, can you could come up with a general term if you really wanted to. So, why? What could we possibly do with this that would be semi-interesting? Approximate the integral from 0 to 0 0.1 of e to the negative x squared dx with error less than 10 to the negative 8. Why 10 to the negative 8? Because that's usually the tolerance set by most graphing calculators. And you don't think for a moment that when you type this integral into your graphing calculator that there is some hamster pressed flat that graphs this curve to scale, finds its area, and interprets that as an integral, right? No. But the hamster knows how to deal with e to the whatever, and the hamster knows how to take antiderivatives, and the hamster knows how to approximate. So let's go to work with this. Um, e to the x is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial, and so on. So e to the negative x squared is what you get when all the x's get replaced by negative x squared, and that's 1 minus x squared plus x to the fourth over 2 factorial minus x to the sixth over 3 factorial and so on. So the integral from 0 to 0 0.1 of e to the negative x squared dx is this antiderivative where we sub, sub, and subtract. Well, how do I do an antiderivative of this thing? Term by term. Antiderivative, 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 messy but still okay, antiderivative, messy but still okay, and so on. So we'll sub in the point 1, sub in the 0, and subtract. Point 1... 0.1 cubed over 3, 0.1 to the 5th over 5 times 2 factorial, 0.1 to the 7th over 7 times 3 factorial, and so on, minus 0. So I'm going to have to hit the pause button for a moment and ask you to consider, 
we want the error to be less than 10 to the negative 8. How do we talk about error on a series that looks like this? We pause. Right. This is an alternating series. And since this is an alternating series, I figure out the first term that's less than 10 to the negative 8th and chop it off. Not less than 10 to the negative 8th not less than 10 to the negative 8, not less than 10 to the negative 8, less than 10 to the negative 8. And since this is less than 10 to the negative 8, we chop off right there, and we say that the integral from 0 to 0 0.1 of e to the negative x squared dx is approximately 0.1 minus 0.1 cubed over 3 plus 0.1 to the fifth over 5 times 2 factorial which is approximately 0 0.0996676. This is within 10 to the negative eighth of the actual integral value. So your calculator figures out enough terms to get the error less than what it wants, and bam, there it is. And that's pretty nifty. So this is the way it's going to show up on an exam. Well, this is a way it could show up on an exam. Where I don't ask you about e to the x, I ask you to do something with something that does something with e to the x. Uh, the other way to do this, the other way to ask questions that could pop up, I could ask you to find the sum. 1 plus 1 plus a half plus 1 over 3 factorial plus and so on. I could ask you to find the sum 1 minus pi squared over 2 factorial plus pi to the 4th over 4 factorial minus pi to the 6th over 6 factorial plus and so on. I could ask you to find those as a nice short answer question and give a short reason for why those are. Bet you you can do that. Betcha you can. Okay, I look forward to hearing all about it. I will see you in class.